Howdy. Good morning. I got to tell you, the other morning we said our prayers, and we was having our coffee, and Billy disappeared doing whatever Billy does. And he come back in, in like a couple hours, and he's like, where's my glasses? And I'm like, what do you mean, where's your glasses? He's like, I don't know what I did with them. We have literally looked all over that house. These are not my glasses. No, these are cheaters. So say a little prayer for him because I don't even know he can see anything. <laughs> Tempted and tried, we're oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us never more lasted though in the wrong farther along we'll know all about it farther along we'll understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by when death has come and taken our loved ones it leaves our home so lonely and drear then do we wonder why others prosper living so wicked year after year farther along we'll know all about it farther along we'll understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by faithful till death said our loving master a few more days to labor and wait tolls of the road will then seem as nothing as we sweep through the Beautiful gay farther along we'll know all about it farther along we'll understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by when we see jesus coming in glory when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet him on that bright mansion we'll understand it 
all by and by. Farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Thank you. Never is there a time that I speak on behalf of celebrating and honoring our veterans that I don't say this. I know this. Uh, out of state I've done it. One on one I've done it. My wife even picked up on it when we were out of state and we shared a military Bible with a man uh, that we met in travels. And, and it is this. Uh, she said, she says, you know, my husband served 38 years in law enforcement and he always tells people, but for folks like you, he would have had nothing to protect. Amen. And, and understand that. Don't, don't, don't minimize uh, our veterans. Uh, I understand that with all my heart. Uh, a lot of people say thanks to me and a lot of people throw things at you. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, it used to be they would call you pig and I would say that just stood for pride, integrity, and guts and then they wouldn't call you that anymore. And uh, we have pigs here too, but uh, not the same kind. And I think some of you remember the acronym we put with that. But, but uh, uh, the veterans are special folks because truly... Uh, in that 38 years, there would have been nothing for me to protect but for them. So uh, I'm thankful very much to them for that. And I want to say this morning as we begin to look at that, to remember this peace, this comfort, this, this freedom, this blessings that we have today as a result of their service. It comes from one thing. Standing. Amen. Standing. I'm going to spiritualize that word standing today. I'm going to talk about it psychologically today, but it comes from standing, and it's something that each and every one of us can do and should do in one way or another. So let us pray, and then we'll begin to break the bread of life. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, again, I thank you for each and every one that we've been able to say thank you for, and all that's been provided through us, through these men and women. And now, Lord, I know there was another sacrifice there was the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we thank you for today. And Lord, that brings us a peace. That brings us a comfort. That brings us blessing in this lifetime and for all of eternity. Lord, may we draw that correlation today in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. So as, as, as we look at the word, they battled, they stood ready for battle. Um, they, 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 they support, got things ready and supported for battle, but for them, there, there would be nothing for, that I would have been able to protect for those 38 years. Uh, but Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice when it comes to our spiritual freedom, when it comes to uh, as myself as a pastor to spiritually protect a flock, but for Jesus Christ, there would be nothing to protect but for Jesus Christ, I would not be standing here saying and doing the things that I'm saying and doing today. Jesus died to protect us. He died to protect us. Jesus was a great warrior. And you say, well, he died. Well, no. <laughs> Don't leave out the rest of the story. The rest of the story is he did something that not a veteran standing here today could do. He rose again. Amen. 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 So he did virtually the impossible because he was God and is God. But Jesus Christ died for us. Um, but I want you to know his, his substitutionary death, his propitiation, his atonement for, uh, for you and I, for our sin. And, and when he died for us, he took our place. He stood for us. Just like these folks stood here. He stood for us. So that word stand in his word is a very, very important word. And he didn't just say it in word, but he did it in deed. 
And that's what's important for us to know today. So as Jesus Christ did these for us, we're going to take a look at his word this morning, and we're going to look here at that, that, and we're going to know that we have this freedom from sin. We're going to know in verse number 10 of, of Ephesians chapter number 6, if you would eyeball that with me, there... The Apostle Paul that's given the words to write to the church of Ephesus, he's writing to folks like you and I. He's writing to truly saved, born-again believers. That's why he calls them brethren here. They're his brethren. Um, and when he says brethren, he uses that title in, in verse number 10. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Boy, if there's an admonition for you and I today... The devil's trying to kick chairs out from under us. He's trying to do everything he can do. He's trying to divide and conquer. He's, he's, he's throwing out everything, including the kitchen sink. That's what he does, amen? amen. That's what he does. Uh, amen means so be it, by the way. And that's what he does. You know, and I say it this way. You want a battle? Bring it. Just bring it. Because I know a lot of folks in the New Testament Baptist Church are standing, and they're going to keep standing. So you just bring your little battle, and we'll kick your little behind and send you away. Uh, that's what we got to say to Satan and his emissaries. It's pretty simple. You say, well, that's bold. I have to be bold. That's called faith. I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being a wise guy. I'm showing you a picture of faith. I'm saying it, and we'll do it. It's real simple. That's called faith. So, so we see that he says, brethren... In verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? His might. his might. Listen, as long as I'm in the power of his might, I'm not going to lose. Uh -uh. Now, you can be pretty arrogant on that one, right? I'm not going to lose. No. And you're not going to lose as long as you stay in the power of Jesus Christ. But you better realize if it's the power of Jesus Christ or the power of Satan, you're in. Yes. Because for no marvel, Satan himself can do what? He can be transformed and appear as an angel of light, as a minister of light. So you have to be careful about that. There's two things to understand. A man's opinion and how much? <laughs> Buck 65 would get you a cup of coffee. All right? Uh, what you have to realize is the spirit and the word do not disagree. So that's how we try. Try the spirits. And the only way to try the spirits is with the word of God. If you're using some man's lips, mouth, or opinions, including mine, you're wrong. You're wrong. You use the word of God to try the spirits as to whether they are of God. How do you do that? You stand. You stand. And where do you stand? You stand in the power of God right there. Here's my cleft of the rock, by the way. Amen. Okay. I hide myself in the... Right here. Right here. It's in the strong tower of the, of the Lord. Uh, we see that. So this word stand is going to be very important to you and I today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In verse number 10, the church, folks. Ephesians 5.25, I'm not going to take you there. But Christ loved the church in so much that he... He gave himself for it. We are what he gave himself for. If you are a born-again believer, he, you, we are what he may, gave himself for. Amen. And we are what he stood for and stands for today. And he's going to take a stand. He is right now seated at the right-hand throne of God. But I have a wake-up call for each and every one of us within the sound of my voice today that people better fear and take heed when he does this. Because when he stands the next time, it's not going to be a pretty thing. Because he's coming to our rescue. Our great war general will be on the path. And what a wonderful thing that's going to be for us. We, but he tells us, stand. We need to stand. Verse number 11. How do we stand in his might? How do we stand strong in the Lord? He says in verse number 11, we put on the whole... The whole armor of God. I used to tell my grandkids when they would want to play cops. Okay? No, 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 no. You got to have this, 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 and this. Okay? If you go out with just that, you don't have everything you need. And it's the same thing with you and I. We are 
admonished by the word of God, we're taught by the word of God that we are to stand, we're to put on the whole armor of God, which in a few minutes we'll see what that consists of. Why? That ye may be able to do what? Stand. Stand. Let me tell you something. If you have somebody that comes before your eyes and before your ears in this, these last days that the Antichrist is, is preparing to be here and the time is getting so powerful against the church and the believers, if you have a man or a woman, I don't care how good you think they are. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care their social status. I don't care how much work they do around the church. I don't care. I don't care, and neither does God. He's not a respecter of persons. The Word tells us that. He says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. It takes the whole armor of God. When somebody stands before you or I, and they begin to try to divide and conquer the things of God, are they standing? No, they are not. Do they have the whole armor of God? You be the judge of that. The, you have the word. Do you see them in, a, in God's house every Sunday morning? Do you see them doing what God says to do? Or do you see them doing what they say they want to do? Because if they're doing what they say they want to do and they're not doing it God's way, they do not have the whole armor of God on. Do I hear an amen? amen? They don't have it. Watch for wolves in sheep's clothing, Jesus said. We have to stand in these final days of the church. We have a job and a battle to do. That battle is the Great Commission. That battle is reaching souls for Jesus Christ, plus nothing. That's our job. That is our job. We see here in verse number 11 again, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the what? What's the, what's the, what's the, what does wiles possibly mean? The ways, the techniques, the style, the things that the devil would use. Do you realize that, here I go making quick examples that I'll get myself in trouble for. And yet you do it. If Jesus says, New Testament Baptist Church family, I died for you. Your mission is this. Your mission is to take this to the world. Now, this wasn't planned. It just came to me, so bear with me. It's coming. He's giving it to me. It's coming. Okay? So, my, so, so that means from the pastor on through, the mission is to take this to the world. And if anything tries to be a stumbling block to this, the way Jesus said to do it, and i got news for you. You won't find any place in the Holy Scriptures that anybody has been a self-appointed rogue light bearer. No. It all goes through the... Right here. And it also has a head. Jesus. And it also has an under-shepherd. And you won't find anywhere in the Scriptures contrary to any of the thing I've just said. Nope. If you do bring it to me, I want to see it. Right. That's how sure I am. I would throw that out there to embarrass myself. <laughs> That's the goal. In order to stand for that goal, I have to be equipped. Not only do I have to be equipped, I have to take on the whole, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. How do I put on the whole armor of God? The nicest guy in the world might come up and say, you know, you probably shouldn't do that because... There could be the nicest guy in the world, and the church comes up to me and says, you probably shouldn't do that because, because if you do, I'm going to leave. Bye-bye. Don't let the door hit you in the dare ear. That's it. Right? Um, need an stand. Scripture says we are to stand against the wiles, the things of the devil. If it causes trouble in the local ecclesia, if, the, if, it's, if it's trying to hinder the work of God in this organized church body, then it is a wile of the devil. Amen? Amen? It's simple. Get it. We got it, Lord, we know. Withstanding. We see verse number 12. For we wrestle not against what? Guys, the devil wants us to wrestle with flesh and blood. The Word of God says, that's not who you're wrestling with. 
pay that no mind. You're not wrestling with flesh and blood. You're wrestling with what? You're wrestling with the wiles of the devil, but you're wrestling against but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He's, so he reiterates to us again, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. We have a really simple litmus test. If we do an act, is it to glorify ourself? Or is it to glorify God? It's to be to glorify God. That's, that, that's, a, that's the weight of the test for every man and woman that knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Um, every one of us have that test. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wicked and high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We're living in an evil day. We know we are. And, and, and so, so the only way we're going to be able to withstand and keep on keeping on for the Lord is to stand against those wiles. And having done all, again we see, to stand. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with what? Truth. 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 John 17, 17 says, Thy word is truth. This is what's important. Amen. Thy word is truth. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of what, church? Faith. Yeah, we're taking, the, we're taking a shield of faith. That doesn't mean faith in my salvation. We've talked about that faith before. That means faith that, you know what? We're doing what God would have us to do. Yep. So turn off the naysayers. Block them out. Lend no credence to them. Don't battle flesh against flesh, blood against blood. Realize we're in spiritual battles in these last days of, the, of, of, our, of our church age. And we know this. We see that <clears throat> what does all this mean to us? We need not to just follow Jesus. Now listen close to this. We need not just to follow Jesus. But we need to be with him. Amen. We need to be with him. Not just follow him. We need to be with him. And that means uh, as, as, we, as we look through the scriptures, I want you to understand that this is where it all happens. This is God's plan. It all happens here at the church. This is where we learn. This is where we're taught. This is where we get battle ready. This is where we prepare to go out for the field. And then we go out in the field. But this is where the organization is of God. And with the organization of God, he sends us out into the field. He tells us to go and do these things. But as he does that, we also understand this. So I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 2 with me. 1 John chapter number 2. We'll be winding down here very shortly. See, the devil gets successful. Anytime we take our eyes off of the, uh, off of the Jesus Christ, the devil will be successful. Anytime we do that. Any of us, when we do that, he will be successful. It's no mystery my wife and I were gone on a missions trip for almost a month. It's no mystery that while we were gone, there were a few things that went on. Yeah. Not God-honoring at all. But with that said, understand the devil goes after people. And he's a coward, and he's a liar, and he's a deceiver, and he uses all those tools to do that. And when he does it, he captures the weak ones first and tries to use that to go after the ones that stand. That's his MO. That's his method of operation. He did it in the Garden of Eden. And it just continues to unfold. It's nothing new. 
Praise God for the folks that stand. Amen. But as we see in 1 John chapter number 2, look at verse 18. This, this is not a new technique. We see what, what the epistle of John, little children, it is the last time, as you've heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. That's a tough one for us to talk about this morning. There's people who have left this place of worship. They went out from us. We can relate to this right here. They went out from us. Why? How can you do that? How could I just go, it's going to snow, I'm going to Arizona? <laughs> Because if I say it's going to snow, you all know how I feel about that. And I'm going to go to Arizona, which, by the way, there's a couple of churches out there looking for pastors. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. That's not, that's not what I'm, I, I'm saying that <laughs> to joke, to laugh. Lighten up the moment here. Um, look. <laughs> It's tough, for, it's tough for those that stand. The ones that have it the hardest are the ones that stand. And we know that. It's tough for those that stand. You know, listen. My wife and I are out there. We're seeing God work. You'll be getting a report on that, so I'm not going to steal all the thunder. And then, you know, you get even our own missionaries going, hey, brother, uh, they need a pastor at this church over here. And I'm like, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. And, uh, uh, you know, you do those things, all the while you're hearing about things that shouldn't be taking place back home while the pastor's gone. It's disheartening. It's very disappointing. Very disappointing. Because in all, in, the, in all the things that the pastor got to hear while he was on the road, not one person has checked with the pastor to see, is this right? Is this true? Not one. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. So it's tough to stand. It's tough to stand. And it's tough for all of you that stand, too. But we know there's a great reward in that. Amen? Amen? There is a great reward in that. But we also know this. They went out from us in verse 19, but they were not of us. That's hard for us to wrap our head around. It's like, man, how could somebody leave the midst of us, in the ranks of us, being around us so long? He says, because they went out from us. Because why? They were not of us. Because they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. I couldn't leave you people on my worst day. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean that. I mean that. I mean that. I mean, on my worst day, no matter what, I love y'all. And I love what we're doing for the Lord. Amen. You know, and if I get my teeth kicked out and my butt kicked, then you do. But I, I you know, I couldn't leave that. So I must be one of you. I must, be, I must be of you. <laughs> I must be of you. And, and, and this is what God's telling us. This is what God wants us to be. What we have right here, this is what God wants. He wants us to, he wants us to stand. And he wants us, brother, brother Harold said something this morning that was, get out of my notes. <laughs> uh, uh, brother Harold said something to the effect that, that uh, he, you know, he said, he, he said, there was a time he cried out to Jesus. He said, don't let me get so far away from you, Jesus. Yeah. Don't let me get so far away from you, Jesus. He said that in Sunday school class. Man, how true that is. We don't want to get far away from him at all. We need to stand. But we don't just stand. We stand with him. Okay? We don't stand against flesh and blood. If, 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 we're, if our eyes have been captured to go stand against flesh and blood, then we have taken our eyes of what Jesus said. We stand with him. With him. We don't go stand anywhere else. We stand with him. Here's some of the, here's some of the innate problems that come with that. Would you turn to Luke chapter 22?
See, this peace, comfort, freedom, and blessing comes from standing. And it comes from standing with the Lord. Anything else causes unrest, causes problems and issues. Luke chapter 22, look at verse 47. And while he yet spake, he meaning Jesus, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve. See, this is one of his own crew. You understand that. This is one of his own folks. This was the inner circle, the close group of people, uh, one of his twelve went before them, drew near unto Jesus to do what, church? Kiss him. Kiss him. Kiss him. But Jesus said unto, unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? I mean, I, I, I perceive from what the words of our Savior said that he was a little bit miffed. <laughs> he says, he says, Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? How bold can you be? Well, we know that old boy's got his own special place in hell right now, doesn't he? That's right. Um, where, where no other man inhabiteth, the scripture tells us. So in verse 49, and when they, when they which were about him saw that he saw, I'm sorry, what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite him with the sword? Shall we go out there and just kill him? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. We believe that to be who? Peter. He, he carried the sword. He whipped it out. Whoosh, took old Malchus, the, the high priest's ear right off. Just like that. Let me tell you something. What did he battle? He battled flesh and blood, didn't he? And by taking that swing with the sword, he cut Malchus' ear off. He didn't probably give much thought to techniques and mechanics at that time. Uh, about general warfare at that time, uh, at, at the old cliche about not bringing a knife to a gunfight, he probably didn't think about too many of those kind of things. The thing that he certainly didn't think about is he had the whole Roman army standing there that was just chomping at the bit to annihilate Jesus and his people. Yep. So, you know, They were kind of outnumbered. They were kind of on... Uh, Peter's decision wasn't a very wise decision to do that. You see, bro Peter broke away from Jesus there for a moment, didn't he? He didn't stand with him. Oh, he was following him. But he didn't stand with him. And that's so important. We have to do more than just follow. We have to stand with Jesus. And standing with Jesus... One thing that we see about Jesus, you want peace, comfort, freedom, and blessing? Praise the Lord for him because, in and, and verse 51, and Jesus answered and said, Suffer you thus far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. Do you know that Jesus ultimately saved the lives of every one of those disciples that was there by diffusing that and, and showing his power in, in healing that. You see how sweet it is when you stand with Jesus? Do you want to stand with Peter? Or do you want to stand with Jesus? Jesus? You know, we have to watch that. Peter was battling flesh and blood. We stand with Jesus. Amen. So Judas, he had followed him. And if we want his truth and his peace, we have to be more than just followers. We have to be able to stand with him. We have to be able to abide with him. As Harold said, Jesus, don't let me get so far away from you that all I'm doing is following you and I'm not standing with you. I'm not standing with you. Judas leading this band to arrest Jesus, you can just imagine the high anxiety that was going on there. The Roman army. And I know they were looking for an occasion just to slaughter them all. And Peter gave it to him. But for Jesus. But for Jesus. But for Jesus. 
There's so many messages in that in your and I's life today. No matter what the what, no matter what the drama is, no matter what the trial and tribulation is, but for Jesus, if we stand with Him, we will enjoy the peace. If we stand with Him, we will we will be battle ready. If we stand with Him. Folks, there's folks that say they want to serve God, but they want to do it their way and not God's way. Those are devices of Satan, not of God. Peter caused no more injury, but he certainly drew attention to himself by acting on his own way rather than standing with Jesus. If we want Jesus, truth, and peace, we must more, do more than just follow him. We have to stand with him. We have to stand against the wiles of the devil. When sheep stray away from the flock, the wolves get them. We don't want that. Turn with me to John chapter number 18. John 18. Verse number 15 in chapter 18, and Simon Peter followed Jesus. You see that? He followed Jesus. We say, well, that's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing. But something else happened. And so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and he went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. He went in with Jesus. But Peter, what did he, what did he do, church? Yeah, he, he, he stood at the door. Then he went out, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? What did Peter do? He said, I'm not. Those are the dangers that we face, you and I. When our best is following Jesus, we need to stand with him, not just follow him. Following him afar off is like being a saved person, but not standing with him. Verse number 16 but Peter stood at the door without, then went out the other disciple, which was unknown unto the high priest, spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door, Art thou not also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I'm not. And the servants and the officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them, and warmed himself. Verse number 25. Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, therefore, unto him, Art thou not also one of the, his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. You see, he followed, but he didn't stand with. One of the servants of the high priest, being the kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did, I not, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again. And, of course, what Jesus said would happen, happened. Immediately, the cock crew. He followed God, but he didn't stand with him. How did this turn out? The last scripture we find right back in Luke 22 again, verse 61 and 62. And the Lord turned, looked upon Peter. <clears throat> What's the moral of the spiritual story? The moral of the spiritual story is we can follow God all we want, but we need to be standing with Him. We need to be standing with Him. And we see that in this verse of Scripture, how it turns out. Is there peace and comfort in this? 
in Luke 22, 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. I can only imagine the look coming from our Savior Jesus Christ. And Peter went out, and what did he do? Did Peter have peace? No. Did he have comfort? No. Was he blessed? Not at all. But yet, we can find so many times in the Holy Scriptures where he followed Jesus. He even fought against flesh and blood to defend the honor of Jesus Christ. But did he have peace? And did he have comfort? No. Because it wasn't done Jesus' way. It's a powerful lesson in the scriptures for uh, myself and each and every one of us today that lead in the Lord's work. We're going to stand. We're going to do an invitation hymn. Praise the Lord for our, our, our Savior and His example for us. Praise God that we have a God that says all we have to do is ask him to forgive us and then repent and turn away. Amen. Today's a day, as every Lord's Day is. I was thankful that Mary sent me a text yesterday while we were in the fellowship hall. She overheard a conversation in the parking lot of some of the people that came to Brother Steele's services that said, it's been 40 years since I heard a church give an altar call. Right? And uh, thanks for letting me know that. But this is a place that we do this every Sunday. Thank you, Father. Every Lord's Day, there's an altar call. What's an altar call for? Yeah, it's for people to come, kneel down, and ask Christ to come into their heart and save them. But it's also a place for people to come and say, you know, I've been following you, Jesus, but I've kind of failed to stand with you. Forgive me. Forgive me. I do this daily. That tells you how messed up I am. Right. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not bringing something to you that I don't have to swallow first. And uh, it's, it can be a big pill to swallow before the Lord sometimes. But man, if we can't do it in God's house... We're in trouble. Yeah. We're in trouble. Stand with me as we sing.